Hello there. It's good to see a friendly face. I almost took you for a raider, I did. Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you'd care to trade. I'm missing a few essentials and... Ah, oh, screw this. Lying just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. You didn't show any reaction to it, so I figured you didn't know what you'd gotten your hands on. There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure from before the war. Those caps with the blue star on them, the tale goes, are the key to that treasure. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. Nah, I gave it up years ago. Too dangerous. And even if I did still collect them, I'd tell you the same. There's people out there so mad with the idea of treasure that they'll attack strangers just on the suspicion that they have some of those caps. All over the place. The easiest place to find them is unopened bottles of Sunset Sarsaparilla. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now. But somehow, new bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it, hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. You can find caps in the unlikeliest of places, and Blue Star caps are no exception. It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus, and he's the one who asked for the Blue Star caps. It's also said he's been around since the war, Standing a lonely vigil, waiting for someone to come and take the treasure off his hands. That'll make him pretty damn old, but I've met a few people in my travels who claim they actually met him. And they weren't the lying type, either. No one knows. Money, weapons, water. It is, or maybe was, something of value. And that's enough to get people motivated. No problem. If you do end up trying to collect more stars... Watch out for a man named Alan Marks. He's killed several people for their stars already. Hold up. There are death claws all over the damn place north of here. I'd turn back if I were you. If you want to get to New Vegas, you're better off heading east from Prim and then looping north. It's a heck of a lot safer. This is Sloan, a camp for us quarry workers. The actual quarry, Quarry Junction, is up the road north of here. The whole thing is an NCR operation. We make cement for the NCR, using the limestone we dig out with dynamite and drag lines. Dirty work, but the pay is good. Wish we got paid in caps, though. Not a lot of merchants like taking NCR paper money. It all gets shipped by rail over towards Boulder City and Hoover Dam. The NCR is probably building fortifications with it all. It's a big machine which moves rocks around, piles at a time. It's pre-war tech, so you need to thump it once in a while to keep it running. No. 
The NCR has been trying to switch over to using paper money, just like in the pre-war days. Trouble is that the exchange rates ain't exactly fair. For example, a hundred bucks in NCR money is valued at roughly half that in caps around here. Seems like a rotten deal for us, but work is work. Sure. They moved into the quarry after the powder gangers came through and made off with most of our dynamite. We shut the quarry down while we waited for the NCR to get us some more blasting sticks, but now the death claws have shown up. The NCR is a no-show, and my men and I have got nothing to do but sit on our asses all day. It's damn frustrating. There are a bunch of escaped cons from down south. The NCR was using them to maintain the railways as part of their sentence. I don't know who screwed up, but the powder gangers are loose. It was one group that attacked us and took our entire supply of dynamite. Uh, we'd see them occasionally, but they didn't seem too keen on getting too close to the quarry. Not sure if it was the noise or all the workers. I can't believe that an entire pack moved into the quarry. I thought that kind of bad luck only happened in New Vegas. Have you ever seen a death claw? They're taller than a man and far, far stronger and faster. And there's a whole pack of them out there. You'd have to be the meanest, toughest, roughest bastard in the wasteland to have any chance against them, and I don't think that's you. You'd need to take out the pack leaders, a mother death claw and the death claw alpha male. Kill them and the pack will scatter. Pretty tough job. Okay. I've been there once, and I don't recommend it. It's just a way to burn through a month's pay in five minutes. I've seen a lot of folks come through here thinking they'll have the easy life once they get there. It never happens. If you insist on going north, don't be expecting a rescue when you get into trouble. up. Let me ask you a question. 
What's the tastiest thing you've ever eaten? I've got this recipe for a Deathclaw omelet that I've been itching to try out. Trouble is, I need a Deathclaw egg. Kinda obvious, I suppose. The quarry just north of here is full of Deathclaws, so there's bound to be an egg or two in there somewhere. Of course, a Deathclaw egg from anywhere will do. According to my Aunt Rose, those things have a ridiculously long shelf life. My great Aunt Rose ran a bed and breakfast back in California, in a town called Modoc. She's the one who created the recipe in the first place. I don't know how she managed to get a hold of a female Deathclaw, but she kept it in a shed. Aunt Rose had a steady supply of eggs for her omelets. At least, she did until some stranger came along and killed the Deathclaw, shot it right in the eye. I don't have much in the way of money, but I'd be willing to share the secret of the recipe. All right. Do you need anything to eat or drink? Sure. What did you want to know? Oh, I'm not. I'm making my way to New Vegas. They say anything goes there. And best of all, the NCR can't mess it up for you. I'll get there eventually. <clears throat> I've heard that you can't even get into the Strip unless you're rich. Born and raised. Things back in California are better than they've ever been, according to my grandpa. The raiders are mostly gone now, and it's easy enough to get a job at one of the mills or farms. But now there's taxes and laws and other things. The NCR keeps things safe and orderly, but it's all very boring. So, I came out east, towards the frontier. All right. Do you need anything to eat or drink? Sure thing. Another satisfied customer. All right, then. Man, I wish I'd stayed back in California some days. You need something? I'd noticed Snuffles limping, but I didn't realize the problem was that serious. Thanks. That beast helps keep spirits up around here. Yep. You looking to buy some supply? Can do. Pleasure doing business with you. Take it easy now.
Hey, where the hell do you think you're going? Prim is off limits. Some convicts from the prison up the road have taken over the town. Everyone inside is either dead or in hiding. What's more, there are two tribes of raiders causing trouble in this area as well. You'd be safer heading back up to Good Springs. We'd love to, but they don't fall under NCR jurisdiction. Even if they did, we're in no shape to protect them. We don't have the equipment to take out the convicts. And even if we did, we need some extra hands for backup. You should talk to Lieutenant Hayes. He's in a tent down the road. Just stay on the west side of the overpass if you don't want to get shot. I'm Sergeant McGee of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. If you want to talk about something, speak to Lieutenant Hayes. I'm from Hub originally, but it's been a long time since I saw it. I'm on my second tour here. Most non-commissioned officers are. Sir. I'm Lieutenant Hayes of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. What's your business? We were sent out here to hold back the tide of convicts from the correctional facility. As you can probably tell, we aren't doing the kind of job we could be doing. The mission isn't a problem. The problem is with supplies. The convicts are better armed and organized than our intel initially suggested. I'm trying to get some reinforcements here, maybe some guns with some firepower, but shit. Things are just going slow. Most people just call it NCRCF. That's NCR Correctional Facility. A little bit ago, the convicts there staged a coup. Killed the guards that weren't able to escape. And have been ransacking the area since then. Not much. They've taken to calling themselves powder gangers. Mostly because they've taken to using the explosives meant to clear boulders as weapons. They got organized faster than I would have thought. Most of them, at least. Thankfully, the small group in town here seemed to split off from the main force, so they aren't getting anything in the way of support. I have some free time. Ask away. Sir? What is it? Sir? We won't go quietly. The Legion can count on that.
I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. Johnson Nash is my name. Husband to Ruby Nash. Lived in Prim going on eight years now, thick and thin. I'm a trader primarily, for what it's worth with things like they are. I also run the local Mojave Express outpost. Well, I don't got any work right now, sorry to say. I'll tell you whatever I can. You have a delivery order you can show me? Oh, so you're talking about one of them packages. That job had Strange written all over it, but we couldn't turn down the caps. Well, now that you mentioned it, a few nights back, one of the townies was out scavenging for supplies. He said he saw a fellow with a daisy suit come through with some of them great con misfits. They was talking about a chip. Well, for that, your best bet is going to be talking to Deputy Beagle. Since they came to town, he was keeping a good bit of notes on them, and he was slinking around Bison Steve when your pretty boy friend came through. He may have heard where they were going. That cowboy robot had us hire six couriers. Each was carrying something a little different. A pair of dice, chess piece, that kind of stuff. Last word I have in the office, it looked like payment had been received for the other five jobs. Guess it was just your chip that didn't make it. First deadbeat we hired to do the job canceled. Hope a storm from the divide skins him alive. Well, that's where you came in. Nope. Different fella. Bigger. Had himself a face on a screen. And he talked more like you or me. I guess I don't have... A beagle had some notes he was taking while he was eavesdropping around the Potter gangsters. He'll be your best source of information on that subject. Sure, I'll tell you what I know. Right now, Beagle is the closest Prim's got to any organized law, but he's still stuck up in Bison Steve. First thing I'd say is get his sorry butt out of there. That beat up old thing? What do you want to know? A courier dropped it off a couple of months back. I got it working for a little while, but the darn thing pooped out. I haven't been able to get it up and running again. I was hoping to use it for some courier work, <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. Hell if I know. I don't think it's serious, but my tinkering days are long gone. Now you're welcome to try. It's yours if you can get it working. If I had my way, I'd dump it in the scrapyard in Novak and be done with the damn thing. I guess I don't have anywhere better. Gangers, gangsters, all sounds like trouble to me. Well, I'll answer what I can. Sure do. I run the courier office out of my shop. Leastways I did before things went to hell around here. Ask away. That's where we are. This here little casino brought some cash and bodies into the town before them powder gangsters came in. Now, they can't rush us without eating a good bit of hot lead, but we are in a kind of box canyon. Guess this is a fitting place for that as any. I reckon that if they thought hard enough about it, they'd realize they got more bodies than we have bullets. But for now, we're safe enough in here. Ask away. Let's see. Been tough around here for a good while now. Worse since them thugs kidnapped our deputy. It started with the breakout from the prison up the road. First there was just a few thugs rolling through town, but then they got organized. Now they call themselves powder gangsters or something, and run around throwing dynamite and shooting people. A little while ago, a good chunk of them left whatever kind of organization they got up there to squeeze all the food and drink out of us they could. At 
It's an old hotel and casino here in town. Old Laura used to rent out rooms there, but she took off months ago. Across the way from the Vicky and Vance, the other old casino. Can't miss it. I guess I... Well, you can call Beagle a deputy so long as you don't harbor too high an opinion of the word. Boy was about as useful as tits on a rad scorpion. Only qualification he ever had was to be brother to the wife of the sheriff. Still, I suppose he don't deserve what's befell him. We would have considered paying the ransom if we'd had caps to spare. Sure, have a look. Another satisfied customer. Bye. Howdy. Quite a town we got here. Sheriff gets murdered. Hello there. What brings you to Prim? I'm Ruby Nash. Pleased to make your acquaintance. My husband and I are Prim long-timers. He fancies himself a traitor, and I know my way around a kitchen. My mother taught me never to say something lest it was nice. So I don't have nothing to say about Prim, for the time being at least. It's a sad state of affairs. Discuss it with Mr. Nash if you care to. Just makes me want to cry. My specialty is a rad scorpion venom casserole. It's more appetizing than it sounds. The venom has a sharp, smoky flavor. And it numbs your mouth so fierce you'll forget you ever had a tongue. It's perfectly safe. Long as you don't have sores in your mouth for the venom to find your blood. Cause that'll kill you dead. Yeah, bye. And Deputy Beagle dragged off for ransom to the Bison Steve. That should bring back the tourists. Howdy. 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 Howdy, partner. Welcome to the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Prim Slim at your service. Authentic cowpoke and official spokespot of the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Yeehaw! Where have you been, partner? Hiding under a rock? Vicky and Vance were this nation's fourth or maybe fifth most infamous celebrity outlaw couple ever. That's who they was. Prim Slim here can tell you the whole story, if you can spare a minute to hear the tale. Yahoo! I ain't had a chance to tell their tale in a mess of years. First things first, any boss you've heard about Vicky and Vance being copycats ain't nothing but ill-tempered slander. Fact is, they begun their crime spree two days before Bonnie and Clyde robbed their first bank. So who was copying who? Now, true, Vicky and Vance didn't exactly cut a wide swath of murder and bank robbery across the central U.S. like Bonnie and Clyde did. It was more like a narrow swath of shoplifting, check cashing fraud, and gas pump drive-offs. But crime is crime. They drove reckless, too. Having lived by the gun, well, Vance owned one anyway, it was only fitting that the duo of desperados would die by the gun. Perhaps it was fate itself that accidentally drove them into a crossfire between police and a gang of bank robbers in Plano, Texas. Or maybe they just didn't notice until it was too late. It's been said that Vicky would have tried to cash a bad check in that bank had she lived. We'll never know for sure. All we know is that the crossfire tore the car and both occupants to pieces, and the police issued an official apology. You can put your eyes on the genuine death car just over yonder. And there's Vance's machine gun in the case next to it. Prim is a thriving resort community located in Clark County, Nevada, right along Interstate 15. 
Whether you can't wait till Vegas to try your luck, or want to hit one last jackpot before you leave Nevada, brims your place. The town's premier attraction is the world-famous Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. So you came to the right place, partner. <clears throat> the Bison Steve is one of Prim's less impressive casino hotels. I'd steer clear of that place, partner, if I were you. Rumor is the dealers over there cheap, and that rickety roller coaster is liable to fall down any day because it wasn't built to cold. Happy trails, partner. Hey there. Howdy. Hey there.
This is hopeless.
Got you now. Anybody there?
I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are numb. Why, yes I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I'd be most appreciative if you'd set me free. I must say it's been the low point of my career in law enforcement. The powder gangers stole into town at night and murdered my sister and her husband, the sheriff, in bed while I was sleeping in the office. I watched them for a bit, waiting for the right moment to pounce and arrest a lot of them, taking careful notes as I watched. To my dismay, they found me while I waited in the shadows and brought me here. Indeed I do, good sir, and I would be thrilled to share that information with you as soon as I am released from captivity. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. Oh, that's so gracious of you to offer to bodyguard me like that. But I'd only slow you down. See you outside.
Howdy. Well, that was quite an adventure. We taught those convicts a thing or two, didn't we? Breaking myself out of a hostage situation, not to diminish your role in it, of course, but it was quite thrilling. Problem is, there's still no law in Prem. What are we to do the next time ruffians menace us and hold us hostage? Oh, no. I'm just a deputy, and I can't be a deputy without a sheriff. It's called chain of command. It should be someone brave like you, but more of a homebody. Someone who'll settle down and watch over us. I heard the powder gangers talking about someone in the prison named Myers who has some experience as a sheriff. He may be a good choice. Also, with the NCR so close by, you may be able to get them to take over the town. Not sure why they haven't helped out already. You will? That's just marvelous! I'll start thinking of questions for the interview. The sheriff that was incarcerated up at NCRCF may be a good choice. You also may be able to convince that NCR guy across the road to take the town under his wing. Although martial law doesn't sound so fun. Any luck finding a suitable Ah, yes. My memory is much clearer now that I'm free from my bondage. I was uh, performing recon, gathering information on some of the powder gangers, when some great cons arrived with your friend in the suit. They were talking about some delivery they took from a courier. I assume that was you? They said they'd be heading through Nipton to Novak to meet a contact there. Howdy. Howdy. I hear you're going to help find Prim a new sheriff. Mighty kind of you to take an interest. Move along, please. Welcome back. Bye. Welcome back. Does sound good, don't it? How much? Guess you'll be needing to find some, huh? Come back when you do. See you. Hey, youngster. Still hanging about Prim, huh? Now, your guess is as good as mine. You might luck upon someone who's a natural-born sheriff. I heard of one fellow what got himself locked in that NCR jailhouse up I-15. And maybe that ain't the best credential, but a sheriff's a sheriff. I imagine the NCR would be able to bring some law to the town, too. But from what I've seen, they barely got the firepower to protect themselves. Finally decided to make yourself useful, huh? If you can bring the law back to Prim, we'll all be in your debt. Well, I guess I never thought of that. I guess he could be sheriff, if you think he could be reprogrammed for it. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, bye.